active manner. So here, your teacher Bhupendra Jeet Kaur, we are going to talk about uh, today's topic, multi-skill approach teaching language skills as you can see. So when we talk about this topic, multi-skill approach, skill, so what do you mean by skill? Have you ever heard about it? Oh yes, I have. What does it do? When we talk about the dictionary meaning of skill, the dictionary meaning is having expertise in something, in something particular. So what do you mean by multi-skill? Having expertise in various things. Whatever you do, there must be something special something specified to you only specifically you can only do that just try to find out that as well what you can do that is very special and particularly only you can do that on this earth the multi-scale approach here when we talk about languages do you really think that we need to have multi-scale approach when we are talking about teaching language skills I guess so because when you say teaching language skills first of all what are those skills it's reading writing speaking and listening these four skills are there which one reading writing speaking listening the sequence should be first of all the child starts listening so the child doesn't need to practice on this that he has to uh, he has to be taught how to listen to the things so that skill is inbuilt we can listen but there is a difference a hairline difference between hearing a thing and listening so a child hears a thing whatever he is uh, whichever things or whichever people whosoever is uh, he is being surrounded with whatsoever they are being talking about or they are discussing they are sharing about he is hearing everything he doesn't know how to use the filter of his brain to segregate the things which he requires for his knowledge and which he must eliminate right so here comes the uh, teachers job that she or he must teach her student how to develop the listening skill second when we talk about speaking listening is closely associated with speaking first we listen to the things and then we start imitating you must have seen uh, small kids they just try to imitate whatever you are talking whatever you are speaking most of the times you say oh we never used this word how my child is using that how my child is using abusive language so mind it dear to that the child the child is hearing everything he's hearing everything he doesn't have any kind of filters that is why he imbibes whatever he just imitates whatever you are speaking so his speaking starts immediately after listening these two things go hand in hand this is the simultaneous practice then third thing we are going to talk about in this lecture is uh, reading now the child is in the school and he knows how to speak how to listen to the things and how to read just a little bit of reading practice is required and the student will be a master in that and the fourth and the last one comes writing writing yes writing when you talk about writing you say oh i can't write anything am i a good writer or am i a writer even yes my dear we all can write the only thing which is required here is a little bit of guidance a little bit of supervision through which we can definitely write well so let's start with the topic when we talk about that let me switch these slides we will talk about first of all we are going to talk about 
reading. Uh, reading is a very important aspect. How? In India, when a teacher goes to a, a college classroom, the teacher is carrying a notion that students come from different backgrounds how I can use multi skills so whatever the traditional method the teacher has studied during her age the same method she tries to follow in her class as well forgetting about the present scenario the need of the students the need of the era nowadays the multi skill approach is actually required so when we talk about reading developing reading skills amongst the students how we can do it here I would like to cite an example of uh, English and foreign language University Hyderabad what they have done they have uh, trained their teachers in such a way that they are now in a habit of using multi skill approach it is not a deliberate attempt to teach the students using this technique but it is natural like the traditional approach we used to follow so what do they do when they talk about reading they just tell the students to read aloud they take the students to the library now here I would like to uh, just uh, mention one more thing that English has most of the times English has been considered a library language in India so when we talk about this that English is library language it means it is related to the people who are well read, who are knowledgeable, who are kind of intellectual. They are the ones who read, who read more, who go to the library and explore the unexplored world of the books, right? Book is a window to the plethora of knowledge. So uh, when you are making your child to read, first step is tell the child to read aloud. When the child is reading aloud, what all things you are practicing along with him? First, the pronunciation. Second, the sentence structure. Third, the coherence. When we talk about these three things, pronunciation can be rectified, can be corrected at a later stage because initially we try to focus on whatever the student is reading the student must be able to understand means comprehend must be able to interpret and should be able to communicate in his or her own words to other person so that is the main motive of this now you divide your students in groups you give as you assign them a task for example you have a, a children's book a story book a very short story maybe of around uh, one or one and a half page you assign a task to each and every group first group that group will read the chapter read the first uh, page aloud the second team let's say you have two teams in your class and the second team will just try to interpret whatever the first team has just spoken aloud or read aloud all right uh, so lockdown day four see what's happening globally we are not bothered about it we are focusing mainly on this uh, reading skills so reading here what we do in the classroom we just try to focus on the literary texts whatever are there in our syllabus number one number two we never go beyond that means we are focusing on the literary texts provided in our uh, in our syllabus which are important and on top of that we are not reading the entire text we are just focusing on the main part of the text and uh, reading the important questions the teachers come to the class and they just dictate the notes and leave here uh, dear students I would like to mention that in CIFL or in uh, EFLU which I have just uh, told you uh, English and Foreign Language University Hyderabad they are not following this pattern they are having a good syllabus and uh, when the teacher goes to the class this task is assigned to the students 
so what they are going to practice through it uh, the other team is going to choose difficult words to ask to their teacher concerned teacher so through reading we are kind of playing a game in which the students are going to talk about new words for example the next uh, game which you can which the next game or activity which you can actually use in your uh, teaching that is whatever the objects are lying in front of you or in front of the students you just tell the students to identify those objects let's say if we are talking about college students let's say they are having a bag or a register or a notebook a book mobile phone a pencil a pen a paper um, sharpener maybe eraser whatever objects they are having in front of them you just tell them to uh, write a few just to uh, read just to uh, name those objects and then develop it right so while reading they are going to learn about what coherence they are going to learn how to interpret the context and uh, most importantly they will also be able to learn how to read between the lines because as far as the literature students of li english literature are concerned they are not supposed to uh, interpret whatever is written on the page they have to think beyond the lines they have to think out of the box whatever is being taught to them so what does a book do what is the role of the library when you read a book it enlightens you it gives something which generates a positive feeling in you it motivates you to do something to think about something and as far as reading is concerned it further motivates you to write something first when you have read plenty of things the entire knowledge the, all the words everything is there in your head and now you are just thinking about it what should i do with this and i have got plenty of knowledge and what should be done what should be done oh my god yes i can go and write something maybe or i can just go out and tell this narrate the stories to the world for the students who ever require it so this is how the reading skills are developed here you can see in this uh, picture that this gentleman he is sitting in a chair holding a book uh, keeping a book in his lap and holding a mobile in his phone i believe you must have seen this kind of uh, scenario in your at your home maybe you are the one who is doing this now what is the requirement of a technology when you are reading a book my dear why do we require it because it is handy whenever i want to look for a word i don't want to break my momentum whatsoever i am reading so while reading i'll just quickly switch to my mobile and if i don't have those kind of bad habits to go to my whatsapp to my facebook to all the notifications whatever are there on my phone i'll quick immediately switch to my dictionary and that dictionary will lead me to the word which uh, where i am stuck so that word through that dictionary i am not only going to know the meaning of the word but its etymology the entire history of that word is going to be in front of me and also the uh, associated synonyms and antonyms including the sentences so mobile device is a very very beneficial invention if we use it rather than misusing it all right we should be wise enough we should be learned enough to know how to use the devices how to utilize the devices not to misuse it because nobody is going to teach us how to misuse it that is there within us that is always there in everyone so here is a very good uh, proverb you may say 
think before you speak. Read before you think. How wonderful it is. And I hope you will try to explain it. You will also try to interpret it in your own words. Here is my understanding of this quotation. When the writer says, think before you speak, do we do that? I don't think so. Everybody is just there to speak, 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 speak and speak. I am the one who can speak better and you must listen to me. We speak for the heck of it. We don't listen to other person. We are just speaking. We even don't think once. Whereas the uh, proverb says, think twice before you leave. We don't even think once when we talk about something. So thinking is a must. We'll get a good idea to float. Number two, we'll have a better vocabulary. Number three, we'll be able to focus on the topic which we are talking about. Number four, our pronunciation is going to be better. Number five, we'll definitely have a good coherence. These five things are very very important when we speak. So it's always better to think before speak. Now read before you think. It's quite enlarged form that read. Why the reading should be emphasized? Nowadays we hardly read anything. We are having mobile in our hands, having the PDFs and everything is available at just one click even then we don't read. There is a lack because the teachers are not uh, indulging the students in various kind of activities. When the students are involved in various kind of activities of reading, then only the students will learn how to read. So we must read before we think. Reading will, uh, reading is going to widen up our horizon. The kind of thoughts we have at this point of time will be far behind if we start reading because with reading there comes a wisdom, a different kind of wisdom and a confidence that yes I know this particular thing and I can read, I can speak better. If you can think better you can speak better and if you can speak better you will have a lot of confidence and if you have confidence you will win the world so reading is a must 